Hey guys, good morning. Uh, so it is an interesting topic I am going to talk about. Before we start, let's take a quick look of this video. Dude, what's all that stuff you're grabbing? Tools! Tools! This is a duct tape, zip ties, and gloves! I have to have my tools! Why do you have a bunch of, like, weird tools in a hidden compartment in your car? Fetish, fetish shit! I, I, I like to bind, I like to be bound. I got, uh, that's not important. Don't ask me questions. I'm not taking questions. The golden god is not taking questions. The audio part, right? So what was the audio about? Tools, right? So this is one of the challenge which most of our data scientists are facing. They don't have tools. Or um, there are there are many pain areas they are facing to move fast and deploy to production, right? Now, how many of you are data scientists here? Anyone? Okay, one. That's good. Thank you for coming. I think. I think that means definitely you are looking for some tools, right? Yeah, cool. So let's get started. Okay. Sorry, this is the first time I'm doing so. Just. Uh, Forgive me. So two important top, or the two important buzzwords these days are machine learning and DevOps, right? And uh, I'm sure all of you have heard how machine learning can help DevOps, right? Have you heard about it? Cool. So today I'm going to talk, going to talk about the other side, right? How DevOps can help really machine learning, right? This is. Uh, something a lot of organizations are investing upon. And we all know how DevOps can really play a key role in making any project faster, right? I hope most of you have in some or other way implemented DevOps in some or other projects, right? Now if you look at it, uh, basic analytics, Excel-based and other things are out. Everybody is looking for machine learning. And if you look at Gartner's survey, Gartner is the leader in research. By 2020, they are predicting that 40% of investment for an organization will be in BI and machine learning. It's all about predictive and perspective analytics. Given that, it's a huge investment. We want to make sure that we do the right things now and ensure all our machine learning models are performing as we want it to be, right? We don't want those uh, self-driving cars to crash, right? Do we? I cannot give you a complete view of machine learning and DevOps in this uh, 15 minutes of keynote. I can just show you a picture, right? Uh, that pretty much explains what machine learning is and what is DevOps to it. Obviously, it's not a Maggie, right? I cannot prepare it in two minutes. So there is complications. There are tools which can help you. Now, using those tools is also not easy, right? How many of you can really eat noodles with chopstick? Not many, right? So also I would give you a 10,000 feet high level view of like what all is involved in a machine learning or a data science life cycle project, right? So if you look at it on the data side, I think we are doing pretty good, right? And there are many talks which already happened yesterday. You might have heard a lot about data and there are almost uh, I think every organization has a big data project, right? How many of you are data engineers? Okay, still less. 
So the other side where actually we need DevOps is the modeling and the deployment, the model management, ensuring the models which are running in production are the right ones, they are not the rogue ones, right? You don't want your transactions, the bank transactions to be detected as a fraudulent, right? You want to ensure that your loans are approved. So a lot of these banks are actually using a lot of machine learning models to predict, right? And make decisions out of it. Now there are, there are challenges in doing that. As you see, models really are telling us a simple story out of a very complex data, right? It's, it's like TBs of data, right? They might go into history of when you actually started swiping your first credit card with first bank, right? So it becomes challenging to kind of look at each data retrain your models, figure out the algorithms, understand whether this algorithm is going to work for me, whether these predictions are right, whether my models are giving the right accuracy score. And also this cycle keeps on repeating, right? So a data scientist has to go look at the data, train the model, again test it, train the model, test it, train the model, test it, right? And actually all of this, they have to do because uh, they need to ensure that the guy, the head of data, or the data science project lead is sitting on their head and saying that I need to go faster than the other organization. So sometimes they even take that model and deploy it into production. How many of you do that? Just uh, take your code and deploy it to production? Oh, I see one hand who is a data scientist. So I'm not, I'm not saying that data scientists are not uh, doing what the right things, but they are amazingly brilliant people, right, who can do a lot of things which we cannot do. They are the guys who are pretty good at quants, statistics. However, and also if you look at it, they can learn a lot of programming languages at a very fast pace, made with MATLAB, Python, R. However, when you look at the engineering side of it, that's where they are lacking, and that's where we need to help them. So given all these challenges, still, let me show you something. Do you see the red box over there? So Data IQ, this is one of the companies who are developing a lot of these platforms to use machine learning. And they did a survey with thousands of several thousand people. Out of them, like 55% were data scientists. And one of the interesting questions they asked, are you using DevOps? And the answer is, only 19% of the people are making use of DevOps. Do we want to be in this kind of world? If, if I change it and make it as a .NET project or a Java or as uh, some other project, I think the numbers will increase significantly, right? Let's also talk about something which we are doing at Sapient. So at Sapient, we believe in enabling human potential, right? And how do we do is the entire theme about reimagining the play. The other things we ensure is there are no silos, no solos, and no bozos. No silo means, as, a, as an organization, if you look at it, always things or the teams will be working in different aspects. Like your data science team might be different from your DevOps team or your engineering team, which is making use of all these predictions and showcasing it to the a very fantastic GUI that this is how your data looks like. This is how your last transactions and these are all your expenses looks like. You are basically making a REST API call and reading all those predictions and displaying them. But all these teams can work in silos, right? We want to make sure that they are not working in silos. They are working together, right? No solos. An individual or a data scientist is not the one who can run the entire show, right? He needs to work as a team. He needs to collaborate with people. Some interesting thing I got to know when I like, started implementing the DevOps for data science project. And one of the first question, what, what do you ask? The first question is, hey, where is your code? Yeah, it is in my laptop. 
awesome. That is how it started. So, what I mean to say is they are not even checking in, in their code. How many of you can really think of not checking in your code in a code repository? Is there anyone? No, great. So, that is how the solo part was. Bozo is all about looking at what is repetitive, what is manual, what is taking more time, try to automate it, right. So, breaking in all this no silos, no solo, no bozo, we have started working on a machine learning platform and actually I do not know, you might not be able to read the images in the background, that is a pipeline thing, I cannot share a lot of details about it, but we are, we have started looking into how DevOps can play. We have given them a code repository, right. We have implemented a CI CD cycle for them. We have also trained them on how to write BDD cases, like for Python we used behave. Now all this is fine, still the model management aspect, the production deployment is a challenge. So what do we do is uh, for case of Python projects, we are taking all those pickle files, putting them in a container developing REST API around the container and deploying that container, right. So, once you have it containerized, Kubernetes, right, can do a lot of wonders for you, right. And that is what we are doing. It has changed the game for us. We see a lot of collaboration happening within data science and the engineering team. We see a lot of projects are getting delivered fast. In parallel, we are able to run a lot of data science projects. Easy administration. Now, I do not know how many of you are aware of GDPR. It is one of the regulations which is coming in very fast and I think it is in May, uh, May 2018, right? They need to ensure that the models which they are running and it is not talking about one model, right? If, if you look at a bank, they might be running thousands of models. They need to ensure that if they are saying that your loan is not approved, why it is not approved? They need to make sure, go back and tell why this model predicted in this way. So, a lot of reproducibility. Now, you might think that how DevOps is different for a data science project, right? It is, it could be same as a C++ or .NET project. The very first thing is the culture, right? Training your data scientists about working as engineers is something challenging. Now, a data scientist works with data and models on a daily basis. Sorry, data is the key. Share, so you need to make sure that you version your data no. as well as the yeah, code similar, together. Similar you cannot have a so model which is running and you and try to figure it out, hey, what happened to my model? Uh, actually, the data scientist left and the data was in his uh, laptop, the sample data which predicted this model. We don't know what is happening. So a lot of these GDPR is driving the organizations to ensure that they are doing the things in the right way. Obviously, after doing all this stuff, we do see better time to market. Oh, don't worry. We do see cost efficiency. We are looking at higher stability if there are any models which are running. So we have the monitoring tools in place. And again, as per data IQ, every one week, your model accuracy goes down by 0.01 percentage because a lot of new data coming into the system. Just an example, right? You do a lot of transactions. In Bangalore or Karnataka, you are swiping in your credit card on like, I don't know, daily basis. <coughs> but then tomorrow you get an opportunity to go on site and you start swiping it in Canada or New York or Australia. And then the models start to say, hey, that could be a fraud transaction. So you need to retrain a lot of your models on those aspects, right? High risk stability, we are able to scale our models we are able to do frequent releases and also we are able to make sure that code is production ready. So we are able to run a lot of static analyzed code tools as part of the CI. And these guys are even looking at it and saying, oh, is it? This is how the Python code should be written? Yeah. That's all I had to say today. We have really enabled data scientists to focus on actually what they are supposed to do. We have provided them a lot of tools. We have really enabled their potential. And 
we did reimagine our play. I will not be able to cover a lot other details. We do are, we are doing a lot of research. We are still talking to a lot of vendors and looking around what are the solutions available. There are already players like Microsoft, Google, Amazon. Amazon uh, is doing a lot in the machine learning. So we are looking at a lot of these guys. I can I will be happy to share more information and also hear you guys how you think a DevOps can be done in a machine learning project. I'll be here around at you know the sapient kiosk where we are trying to showcase some of the wonderful reimagined play. And uh, so you all or you can reach out to me on my LinkedIn or Twitter. Thanks.